Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to make this flapper hat. This is a style of hat from the 1920s. We're going to put a bow on it. You can put this bow at the back or you can put the bow on the side. I like it at the back. So I am going to be using this Bernat Premium. It calls for a 5mm, which I'm going to use. And the color is just simply burgundy. So that's what I'm going to be using. So we're going to start with a magic ring. So we just chained one, I want you to put another chain in there. And then we're going to put 11 double crochets into this magic ring. That's my 11. I'm going to pull this closed and I'm going to slip stitch to the first stitch. And I'm going to chain two. So throughout this project, I want you to put one double crochet into that same chain two space. This is going to cut down on the seam. So from here, you're going to put two double crochets in each stitch around. That's 20. You're going to slip stitch to the top of this first chain. And you're going to chain two. And you're going to put a double crochet into that chain two space. Your next round is going to be one double crochet and an increase. That's one double crochet. And then your increase is two double crochets in the same space. And repeat. One double crochet, two double crochets, all the way around. And at the end of it, you should have 30 stitches. So I'm back around. And I'm going to slip stitch to the top of that first chain and I'm going to chain two and I'm going to put a double crochet in that same chain two space. So your next round is going to be two double crochets and an increase. So that's number one and uh, next stitch gets one that's two double crochets and then the next stitch gets your increase of two double crochets in the same space. So you can repeat this all the way around, oops, and when you're done you should have 40 stitches. So every row is going to increase by 10 because we started with 10 double crochets. I mean we did 11 but we're 
10 double crochets working stitches. So each row will increase by 10. So I just want to point out that um, you should be ending in this last stitch with your last the last part of your sequence. So every time you come around it should be one one two that you end with or one two or whatever sequence that you're doing. And then you're going to so there's three chains here. You're going to slip stitch to the top of this first chain which is why we put 11 in in the first place because we're using this as a slipping slipping station I don't know what you call it but there should be three you're gonna go to the third one you're gonna just go to the top stitch if you need this to be bigger which I should have said before if you need this to be bigger than 20 inches like my head's 21 and a half inches this hat doesn't fit me very well um, you just need to go up in needle size or needle hook size that's all you need to do same pattern so put your double crochet in that same space and our next round is going to be three double crochets and an increase so that's one two three double crochets and then your increase of two double crochets in the same stitch. So at the end of this round, you should have 50 stitches. So I'm back around again. And I'm going to slip stitch to the top of this first chain. Chain two. Put your double crochet in that chain two space. So your next round is going to be four double crochets and an increase. That's four double crochets. And then your next stitch gets the increase of two double crochets in the same stitch. So do all this, repeat this all the way around and at the end you should have 60 stitches. Alright, so I'm back around and I'm just going to slip stitch to the top of that chain, chain 2, and put my double crochet in. So if you're not doing this, you're going to have a seam. If you are doing this, you're going to, I mean, you can see a little seam right there, but it's not, it's not that noticeable. I'm going to show you. You see a little bit, but if you're not putting that in there, you're going to notice, <laughs> you're going to notice a huge difference. So our next and final round um, for this part of the hat is going to be five double crochets and an increase. And at the end you should have 70 stitches. If you need it bigger for your head and you're not using a bigger needle but you do, or a hook, but you do need it bigger, you can go one more round. It'd just be six double crochets and an increase. So all my numbers, won't <clears throat> they won't match your numbers, but you can still build it the same way but you just may need it bigger for your head. Two, one, two, three. So that's five double crochets and then your increase. Alrighty, so I've come to the end of the line. I'm going to slip stitch to the top of that first chain and I'm going to chain one. I'm going to put one single crochet into the same chain one space and I'm going to single crochet 
14. That's 14 single crochets. Then I'm gonna do back post double crochet in the next 40 stitches. So starting over here, I'm gonna yarn over. I'm gonna go in around this post and I'm gonna finish my double crochet. So I got my 40 back post double crochets and now you're going to single crochet in the next 15 stitches. And you're going to slip stitch into that next stitch. And you're going to chain one. Oh, sorry, you're going to chain two. Chain two. You're going to put one double crochet in each stitch around. Then you're going to slip stitch and you're going to chain one. And I'll meet you right back here after. So you should have 70 stitches. Once you come back and slip stitch, you're going to chain one because we're going to do this single crochet business again. You got to put your one single crochet in that same space, cut down on your seam. So you're going to put one single crochet in the next 12 stitches. So that's 12 stitches for me. And then in the next 44 stitches, you're going to do this back post double crochet. So that's how you get this look with this ridge. I come from behind and go out the other stitch. Pull through and do a double. And then in and out. So you're going to do 44 of these. So I got my 44 done. And then you're going to do 13 single crochets back up to your slip stitch. So you're going to slip stitch to the top of that first chain and you're going to chain two with your double crochet into that space. And then you're going to do the same as before, one double crochet in each stitch around. 
and I'll meet you right back here. So I've come back around and I did my slip stitch and a chain one. So I'm going to put that one single crochet in that same chain one space. So for this time around, we're going to do 11 single crochets. Back post, double crochets in the next 46 stitches. So next you're just going to do 12 single crochets back up to here. slip stitch, chain one. So normally we would do the one double crochet, blah, blah, blah. We're not going to do that because we're coming to the end of our hat. We're getting close anyway to the end of our hat. So we're not doing any more in-betweens. So you're going to put your single crochet in this stitch. You're going to single crochet 10. That's 10 single crochets and then you're going to double crochet back post double crochet for the next 48 stitches. So each time we're so we're working on a diagonal we go out each time. So for the next 48 stitches you can back post double crochet and I will meet you after. So next you're going to do 11 single crochets back to the beginning. So you're going to slip stitch to the top of that first chain. Oops. You're going to chain one. You're going to put a chain one into the same space as your, or you're going to put a single crochet into the same space as your chain one. And then you're going to crochet, single crochet, nine stitches. So at this point, it's probably easier to back count instead of the way we've been doing it. Actually, we're going to do something a little bit different this time. So that's nine single crochets. So you're going to do one double crochet increase. And you're going to do that 25 times or in the next 50 stitches. <laughs> so um, it's going to be easier if you got a stitch marker then that way you don't need to count or you don't need to try to figure it out and this is all I did. 
The next round after that is going to be single crochet and 10 stitches. So just count back 10 stitches from the beginning here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So the next stitch is where you're going to stop your one double crochet increase. So we're going to one double crochet increase all the way around to this marker using that stitch because your next stitch will start your one single crochet. So if that makes life easier. So we're going to do one double crochet in the next stitch and then an increase of two double crochets in the same space. So do that until you get back around to your marker. All right, so I am back around. I took up my marker out already and I'm gonna do my 10 double crochets, or single crochets, sorry. And you are going to slip stitch to the top of that first chain. Chain one. You're going to put a single crochet into that same stitch. You're going to single crochet nine. That's my nine. You're in a back post, double crochet in what should be 75 stitches because we increased. So you're in a back post, double crochet. So we're doing the cap. Like, oh, I didn't grab my head. We're doing this part, the cap part. So we'll be done soon except for our bow. So back post. Double crochet. So once we come back around, you're going to do 10 single crochets to the end, do your slip stitch and chain one. A slip stitch, chain one. So, uh, do your one single crochet in, in the same space. So, we're not doing any more of this funny business. We are um, gonna single crochet nine. You are going to put one double crochet in the next 75 stitches. So back up to where you ended off your other one. So here, and then you're going to do your 10 single crochets back to the start. Slip stitch and chain one, and I'll meet you right back here. So you're going to finish off with your 10 single crochets. Okay. 
you're going to slip stitch into the top of that chain. You're in chain one. You're going to put your single crochet in that chain two space. And as you can see, we can hardly see our seam at all. So this is working out for us. So to tighten everything up, finish everything off in a nice, clean, tight hat, you're going to single crochet around the entire hat. And then when you come back around, you can fasten off and we can make the bow. So I'm back around. I'm just going to fasten off. You don't need a you just need enough to kind of weave in because you don't want to cut it right off. We do want to just weave in a bit because we don't want anything coming unraveled. So I am going to go through the next stitch before I start weaving just to kind of pull that knot down. So this is the back. It's going to be covered by a bow if that's where you're putting your bow. So I'm just going to weave in and out three different directions. That way if it does try to kind of come out, you know, from washing or whatever, it's got three different directions. It's going to have to go. Try not to go through the to the other side because you don't want to see this on the other side. You just want to stick with the stitches on this side. So Once you're satisfied with how far you've gone with your weaving, I usually go a little further than most because I'm anal that way about it. But So that's the back of your hat. This is your seam which is not very noticeable at all and that's what we want. This is the front of your hat. So oh, we do need to take care of this guy in here. While we're weaving. So I'll make sure you pull this tight. Again, don't go through the entire hat, just I don't want to see it on the other side. There. Let's take this hat off. Put this one on. There we go. So, I know it's hard to see. Um, I made this one a little bit bigger for my head because I'm a 21 and a half. So that's the idea. I've got it laid down, but this it it's too big for this head, but that's the idea. You want to have a, a good size cap on it so that it protects your eyes from the sun and, and stuff. So let's get to making our bow. All right, so um, in with my yarn, I'm going to make my bow with the same way I made my bow here, um, I used the same purple, but I used a Red Heart Sparkle Cake. I used the pink out of it. Um, I have a, a yarn winder, so when I wind the sparkle cakes, I do it in the different colors, so I can use the different specific colors. So that's what I did here to, to make the bow for that one. Um, this one, I'm going to use the silver out of the sparkle sparkle cake. That's what it's called. It's it's from Red Heart, and it's just called a sparkle cake. They come in different colors, but all of them, I'm pretty sure, have this gray, so it doesn't really matter. You can look it up on the Michaels website or um, whoever you you have around you, Hobby Lobby or Joanna's or. Um, don't think Michael or I don't think Walmart sells them, but I, I know I know for a fact that Michaels does because that's where I shop 
I don't have a Hobby Lobby and I don't have a Johanna's. So get your two, we're still going to use the five millimeter though, even though we're doubling up on our yarn. It's going to be, I mean, it's not a tight bow, but we want it to not um, bend that easily. So I want a tighter, tighter weave. Does that make sense? So first we're going to chain um, 25. So you need to make a slip knot. So I know I usually show you by wrapping it around my finger, but there is an easier way to do it. Um, I'm going to hold it just like this. I'm going to wrap it around. So I'm almost making a circle, but I'm going to pop that guy right up into the middle of the circle and make my slip knot that way. Um, I just find it less time consuming because you're basically, you're just making a circle. You're just almost tying a knot, but you're not. You see what I mean? Like you're going to tie a knot, but then you're not going to tie the knot. So that's all that, that's all I do there to make the slip knot. It just it's way faster I usually actually just use my hook and I grab it just like that so chain 25 That's 25. And that's what your whole bow is going to look like. Just a combination of the two colors. So you're going to double crochet 24. All right, so that is my 24 double crochets. I'm going to chain two and I'm going to do this for two or three more rows. So you should have four rows all together. If you don't want yours to be that big, then you don't have to go that big. Your chain two is going to count as a stitch. So you don't have to go into this first stitch. You can go right into this other one. So once you complete your bow, I know it doesn't look like a bow right now, but you can fasten off. You can tuck this in. So I'm just going to weave mine down the side. So once I pull tight, I'm going to pull that back out obviously to snip off little pieces there so we are going to crochet the middle piece that holds the bow together so this can just you can do a couple of things with this What I'm going to do right now, you don't need to do. You can just weave it in and be done with it. Um, this is just a preference for me. So I'm going to come across 11 stitches. So that's about the middle. This is just added security. Um, I like to gather 
where I'm going to put my thing anyway. And I just want to wrap this around. So, I like I said, we're going to crochet um, the middle piece. But I just like to do this just for my own. Um, try not to do what I just did. So, I'm just going to tuck this through here. Just my own added security. You don't need to do it. So then I like to just pull really tight and then come back around. So again, not a requirement. I'm just going to tie a small little knot. So you don't need to cut that off all the way because it's going to be under the thing that we're going to make. So that so far is the bow. If you're satisfied with that being the bow and you don't want to make the middle piece, you don't need to make the middle piece. But I just think it looks a little more elegant with the middle piece. So we are going to make a slip knot. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of a longer tail on my slip knot just so I can tuck it in later. Um, chain five. This doesn't need to be very big, and it, it's so fast to make. So you're going to single crochet four back across, and you're going to do this for eight rows. You're going to chain one and turn. So that's eight. I did my eight. So when I fasten off, I'm going to fasten off with enough to sew the bow together and then sew to the to the bow, if that makes sense. Okay. So we want to tuck this guy in. So I'm just going to scooch along the side here if I can. And then this here. So that's our back where our thing is. So I'm going to whip stitch this. So whip stitch is generally back loop to back loop, but I'm going through all of it. Not that I think I need a tighter hold or anything, but it's just because it doesn't really have to look pretty. The reason we do back loop to back loop is just to make it look pretty, you know, respectable. But this is just going to get sewn to your hat. It's literally the back of the bow. That's the front. So that's what this is going to look like. One more stitch and then I'm going to do a knot. So I'm going to go through this loop and I'm going to do a knot. So pull back and forth like that. It tightens that knot right up and you will not have to worry about it coming undone because it just will not. I'm going to put the bow at the back of the head like I did my last hat. So just like that, you have to try to even, even steven it up right there. And then I'm just going to go down through the hat, obviously. I'm going to go back up as close as I can to my lead. And it's going to be really tight to get it up through that bow. So that's where I want to get it up because it's going to be nice and tight. So I'm going to go back down close to my lead. And if it's difficult to do, that's where you want it. So the reason I do that is because when I pull, this is just going to look like a stitch. They're, nobody's going to recognize it as anything other than. That's why I go back up and down next to my tail. I'm going to do this a couple of times because I want a decent hold. 
So I'm going to go down. I am going to wrap around like that. And I'm going to go through the loop and I'm going to make a knot. So pull back and forth a couple of times to make that nice and tight. And then you can cut it off as close as you can to the knot because you certainly don't want to feel that in the back of your head. And there we have it. Your flapper hat is done.